Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. My Lord, the poor of the morning, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh, but blessed is the name of the Lord. This time I invite you to turn to your programs as we sing the open hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Today is a day of mourning, but joy will come after. We pray, dear Father, that you be with each and every person that are going at this time. Thank you for taking all of us here safely this afternoon. Father, later in this evening's program, a word from your man servant will come to us. We pray, dear God, that as that these words should have come to us. Those of us who are humble always say, well, we pray, dear Father, that you will help us, that we will continue on this beautiful way. For those who have not yet accepted you, we pray, dear Father, that this evening a word will reach their heart, where they will accept you as their personal Savior. Father, we pray that as we should have go through this program this evening, let everything be done in your names and on glory, and hard to maintain in your house, we pray in Jesus. Our first reading will be taken from 1 Corinthians 15, and we'll be reading verse 50 to 58. Now say this, now say this, I, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this incorruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this, this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to the past that saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 58 and last. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Here is the reading of God's holy word. Thessalonians 4, reading from, verses, chapter, reading from verses 13 to 18. Here beginning. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which, is, which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, so we shall ever be with the Lord. Eighteen and last, with all comfort, one another with these words.
prepare it, he will come again and receive us unto himself. So I don't know about you, but I have a dream. I have a dream to live in that city for a spirit. What do you say? Yeah. Well, we will continue. We will take some tributes. We'll take the St. Catherine, St. Catherine Community Service Federation, that's Lynn State B Zone, followed by the Mispa Baptist Church, then Elder L. Turner from the Uatan Seminary Church. And we have the Community Development Committee from Ginger Ridge and then Calvin Williams. So we'll take them in that order. So St. Catherine Community Service Federation, Lindsay. Some writer, Maxwell Cornelius, in one of his songs, penned these words, and I quote, Not now, but in the coming years, it will be in the better land. We'll read the meaning of our tears, and there, sometimes, we'll understand. Then all we have to do is trust in God through all the days. Fear not, for he does hold thy hands. Though dark the way, still sing and praise. Sometimes, sometimes, we'll understand. This afternoon, I'm here representing the St. Catherine Adventist Community Services Department, Zone B, Linstead. Of course, Sister Victoria Zemenes is our hardworking team leader. But I'm not here to pay tribute to her this afternoon. I'm here to pay tribute to someone who lived and fought a good fight. I remember Bernie. I didn't know her as Ida Lee. I have always known her as Bernie. So I can't come up here now and say Ida Lee. Can't do that, eh? All right. I, 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 I remember her as a, a quiet person. But before I get into that, she would be at Sister Zemini's home for a considerable period of time. As a matter of fact, Sister Zemini's would have been her doctor. The moment she was not feeling upbeat, she would run to Dr. Victoria Zemini's. And the moment she was up and bouncing again, she would be right up here. She would tell her, listen, I am feeling good and I want to come home. And let her unpack her things, no? Then Sister Zemini's would see what would have happened, eh? Good. She being at Sister Zemini's home, it gave us as friends the chance to interact with her and to interface with her. You know, an account that I got on many accounts, it tells me that she was a hard working lady. This she did to ensure that bread and butter were on the table at all times for the family <coughs> members, eh? She loves her children, loved her children and grandchildren. And you know, it, it, it reminds me of my mother. You know, my, 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 my brothers would give my mother money when she was alive and she would hide and, and when the grandchildren came around she would you know, slip a little thing in, into their hands. That was Birdie, eh? And no sister Zemini's or anybody could stop her, eh? Birdie was a very humble person. Not only was she humble, but she was also a spiritual one. When visited, she would not go gossiping about other people's business, but she would always be talking about the love and greatness of God to her because she would have had a lot to talk about as it relates to how God would have led her from time to time. In interacting with her, I realized that she loved cran water. Yeah, cran water. She never drank the ordinary water that I would drink, you know, cran water. One day I said to her, Bernie, when you get over there, 
You're going to drink cran water? You're going to get cran water to drink? She remarked, whatever they give me over there, I will drink it. I said to her, I have news for you. You won't drink any cran water. You are going to drink milk and honey. Yes, and the milk and honey that she will drink, it won't cloy her. You know, you drink something over time, it would cloy you and let you feel sick. No, that would make her sick at all, since she's going to have a healthy body. And I want to ask the family members at this time to be strong. I know it's not very easy for you to be strong at this time, because you have lost a mother, a grandmother, a sister, whatever. It's not very easy. But you know, I just ask you to remember that God knows the way. He holds the key. He guides us with unerring hands. And one of these days, not far from now, with tearless eyes, we will see, yes, there up there, we understand that His grace is so amazing and He loves us. God bless you and bless you all.
I get to know is Birdie or Birdie as I, as I used to her. You know, get to know her through her daughter, Sister Victoria. That's how I get to know that lady. And I knew her as a wonderful lady. You know, what, what I love with her about them, she all the days that she carry a pleasing coat in her. All the little pleasing. And if she's smiling, always. And she always looks happy at her day. She, I know, and you are the loving, caring mother and grandmother. A person who always looks, she looks out for her grandchildren and children likewise. And whenever I tell you, um, you, you, you go to this, the um, this, 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 um, minister was in the last year, she always, you know, and she's just a loving, after the loving, caring person. She going to show you any way like the way, you know, some people might look certain way and they say, no, she does a pleasing, she talks to you look good as if you know you long them or you to you long them, things like that. So I just want to say to the family members, especially if the Vicky, just cheer up, cheer along, because joy comes in the morning. The week today, but joy comes in the morning. Actually, Anthony, all the grandchildren, just keep serving God, keep living for Jesus, and keep walking with him likewise. And all grandchildren and family members, just keep cheering along. What does it mean that you have that for you in the world life? You have hope. Yes. Sister Bertha has lived her life and leave a legacy behind her for you to follow. So just take a page of her book and live the way she lived. Christian life, a loving life, a caring life, life to share. And just remember that God is always there, looking out for you. The one this you see, you will find it. Those who are serving him, continue to serve him. Those who have accepted me as family members, seek him today while he is in me. Just call upon him and you will, he will hear you. Okay. I have practiced that song, but that song is going to be like a talk like the money that song. So, the change. Okay. But I My throat was so dry. He gave me water.
I don't know about you, but I know His grace and mercy why I am alive. And I just want to speak a little about Miss Birdie. I happen to know Miss Birdie long donkey years. Yes, I'm a big girl. And I know Miss Birdie because of honey, selling honey. So mom would send her from Belfield to come down to Sandy Brown to get honey from Miss Birdie for different reasons. And as I heard somebody say earlier on, I have never come up on a dull moment with Miss Birdie. Miss Birdie is always cheerful. I don't know the bad side of her and I didn't care to know. And I am glad I did not know. Today we can say she has gone to rest until we go to rest too. However, I just want to encourage the family members to be strong because Miss Bird is not her children. Hello? She's a big girl. Oh, you don't understand the language. That's all right. <laughs> She's a big girl. And anything that God does, it is well done. And today, the Lord allowed Miss Birdie to go to sleep because of reasons beyond our control. So we're here to give thanks. There is coming a day when no
Amen. Isn't it wonderful to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Of course, Abode is a group, but I am here to represent them. I am Andre, and Miss Zimini's, it will be worth it after all. Church, Sisters at least, 
would like to say condolence to you and your family. Sis, remember, weeping may endure for a night, but God promised us that joy comes in the morning. In the blessed Savior, calling the oppressed, only and related, come to me and rest. I'm no longer tired, I am Lord with them. Bring me every burden, bring me every care. Come unto me. person. And if you look at the picture, you see a smiling person. Yeah. 
just turn to the person beside you and give them his birdie smile. This afternoon we stand here representing the St. Catherine Community Services Federation for the Parish of St. Catherine. And with me are members of the executive, of which Sister Ziminis is the Vice President for the Lindsay B Zone. And I'm going to just ask everybody from the Community Service Federation to stand, including the Director and our Chaplain. Everybody from the Community Services Federation, please stand. Amen. Amen. And that goes to show the impact, thank you, maybe seated, the impact that Sister Zimini has on all of us. We're sure that there is much to remember and much to be thankful for as Sister Zimini and her family remember Ida Lee King and the way she lived her life and the way she related to those around her. You see, each of, us, each of us give gifts of ourselves to those we share life with. These are gifts that no one can take away. Though we are gone, these gifts remain, and those to whom we have given them remain as well. It is against this background that we say to Elder Victoria Zimines, Life is a journey we all must take through hills and valleys, through streams and lakes. Learning new lessons each step of the way, increasing with knowledge day by day. This great world before us can be seen through such varied lens and there to help us along our, are our very good friends. Life is a journey we all must take. Our feet set upon this earth for a purpose, make no mistake. Step by step, our footprints of worth Memories upon memories from our very birth. Each print, a legacy for those who leave behind lessons of wisdom, courage, and a life well lived, even divine. Each print, a stamp of approval that I have conquered these paths. Each print, a sign that I have been <coughs> courageous. The very last. Like this poem, everything shall come to an end. This journey of life is not in finite, my friend. So make your own footprint. Stop them well. For they too will form stories which others will tell. Make your own footprints. Carve them well. In them you will be destined, heaven or hell. Life is a journey we all must take. Live it well, my friends, no matter the stakes. Life is a journey we all must take. The only thing that we can do is live a life that is pure and true. That when our names would have been called, we have nothing to fear at all. Whether or not we believe it so, someday we we'll all have to go. Ready or not, that time is sure. It's our lot in this life, no less, no more. Sister Idele has completed her journey, but we all have the opportunity to continue our journey. So let us live it well, knowing that one day, all our trials will be over. One day, there'll be no more death. One day, there'll be no more Thanksgiving service. One day, there'll be no more heartaches, no clouds in the sky, no more tears to in the eyes. All of the peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. Until that day come, ladies and gentlemen, let us all be faithful. Good afternoon, church. Let me hear the church give the Lord a shout of praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. Precious memories, how they linger, how they ever flood my
It's not an easy task to give a tribute for my mother. It is a very, very difficult. But I just have of your patience and I have that you bear with me as I go through. It was um, four years ago I have given tribute to one of my mothers and that is um, Leon's mother, Miss Dolly. I have three mothers and have left with one. I have my daughter to stand as I acknowledge you as, as my mother, as my holy mother that is left. A golden heart has stopped beating. Her working hands are now to rest. It broke her heart to see her go, but we are sure that God knows best. Heaven knows we never wanted to see our dear mother, bird eye, go. But the Lord has blessed us with precious memories that we, that we will never for, forget. Since she has left us, I often lay awake at night. But the world is fast asleep. We hold her tight within our hearts, and there she will be. You see? Life has gone on without her, but it will never be the same. I'm the Lee King, affectionately called Miss Birdie. Mama, poor girl, mom, whatever. But she was a woman who has exhibited the true strength of a woman and the resilience of a good mother. Her love, generosity, patience, independence and love for God, just some of the many tributes that we all can emulate. She has mothered and fathered six children, five of which are her biological and one adopted. This is my brother, Hebron, who was adopted. He has been a tower of strength to the family. She treated all children equally, and I'm sure the community can attest to that. Berda has worked tirelessly to support and take care of her family by farming various crops and selling the produce at the Gold Harbor Market for an income. Most persons who know her would know that she was famous for her honey. Yeah. I can remember seeing her at night preparing bottles of honey for sale the following day. She strongly believed that children should not be spoiled, but it's important that parents provide all that is necessary for them. This is why she went above and beyond to ensure that all her children her educator. Bernie found it extremely difficult at times to send us to school, but she purposed in her heart to ensure that we went, if even, if even it meant preparing roasted dumpling for lunch or meeting us part of the journey with our lunch. Sometimes we would even sit in the shade along the road to eat and then run back to school. Even though she never had a clock, she was never late with her lunch. I don't know how she did it, but God used her to make all of us happy. A vivid memory in my mind is when Ernie started high school in Spanish town. And it was difficult for Bird Eye to pay the boarding fee. So Ernest would travel on the early morning bus to Spanish Town with a bag of provision so that she he could assist with the expense of boarding fee. This he does with pride and joy. And I know it was the fruit of Berda's labor. Her greatest desire was for all her children to be successful. Her gracious art which the same for all our good grandchildren, nieces, nephews, family friends, and even the children in the community where she lives, whose her life is 
impacted. But don't be fooled. And do kind to everyone as children. We were constantly reminded that we should not accept things from strangers. And if she ever found out we went against our wishes, we would be corrected by the word of correction. Yes, and had to take back, not even stop there, we had to take back the things of the person, which would be very embarrassing to us. I remember when Bernard and I went to Jackie's shop, packed grocery for Clifford, that's my brother, and would say to Jackie that she isn't begging it, she would pay for it. This bill later comes to her and myself. We can't underestimate, we cannot underestimate the love of a mother. I remember another time my sister Lorna had some challenges. Birdlight waited until Jackie, who owns the shop, left for Old Lago. Then she packed a few essential things for Lorna and sent it on a taxi man to Old Lago. Little did she know that the taxi man would not see Lorna. He saw Jackie, the owner of the shop. And he gave, them, gave Jackie the package. Birdlight's secret was exposed. That's the love of a mother who wanted to help her children do difficult moment. However, that bill was paid. But I gave out of nothing. Her attitude of giving became so bad that we had to stop our monthly allowance and brought her grocery instead. Because we realized every two weeks her allowance is finished and she sent back for more money. The food is done. That wasn't our problem because it's always a joy reaching out to our mother because we know that she has worked hard for us. We know that she has worked hard for us. And therefore, we're always gracious in giving to her. Not only that, but the money we sent for her for grocery, she packaged it and gave it to her grandchildren and all the persons within the community who are in need. Our mother wasn't a giver, but she knew how to be appreciative. She would say thanks for everything she received and would end it with, God bless you. Sometimes I say, you don't have to say that so often. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Ever our brother took her twice to Canada on vacation. This was one of the joyous and the happiest moments in her life. She was grateful for the exposure. Thanks to you, Hebra, for being the youngest, but you have a heart of giant. Yes. I love you. I just want to, not only that, my mother was a frail woman. I have watched the transformation within my mother's life. I stood by the pool when she gave her life to God. And I've seen the transformation. I now see my mother pray all night. I saw my mother pray for everybody. She laid on her back and she prayed for all her children. She prayed for the community children. She prayed for the sick, as though she was sick. Her favorite song was, It is well with my soul, when peace like a river attended my way. When sorrow like sea billows roll, whatever may be, my loss may be, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Our favorite scripture, Psalm 27, I will lift up my, the Lord is my light and my spirit. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. I am happy the day my mother gave her life to God. Yes. I just want to say, I just want to use this medium to express my gratitude to all the members of the family. In particular, Jackie, who stood by her. Ernest, Lorna, Clifford, J.D., Natoya, Sabrina, and Debar. They were always constant by her side. 
to those all who strengthen. And has been a tower of strength, Raquel, Leon, and to my friends, especially from the Georgian Seventh-day Adventist Church. Thank you for the journey with me. The ride was smooth with you and board, so full of support and all the members of the Communist Service Executive Body they are behind me. Thank you for your power and your support. I really and truly appreciate it. To our church family, the Mr. Baptist Church, where she was a member, the family of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, the Georgian and the Blue Gold Seventh-day Adventist Church, thank you for your prayers and your support. To the community members who impacted her life in a positive way, either by a shout of bird eye, walking over there, I know she enjoyed that. She sat on the veranda day by day just to give a shout out to who passed by. And that's one of the reasons why she would not stay by me because she's, she has missed seeing those persons staying on the veranda. I don't have a veranda where she can see many persons. So she wanted to go back home where she could see those persons. Thanks to our friends and relatives Sister Elizabeth Jennings is our holy sister that has left, and one brother, Brother Barry. Thank you. We're grateful that you are celebrating our life with us today. Winty and Sandro flew from the state last night to be with us. We thank you. We appreciate your visit. We continue to pray for your prayers and your support. Bird eye with a golden heart. She came, she lived, and now she has passed on. Precious soul, golden heart, we are so blessed. Bird Eye, as a 
a person and how much she meant to us. Adelie, Adelie, Miss Birdeye, Birdeye King, or Adelie King, was born to Rebecca Jennings and William King on September 19, 1941, in the quiet district of Friendship in St. Catherine. She was the fourth child of Rebecca. She was schooled at Mile Hill Elementary. At age 10, Adelie was sent to live with her aunt Angelina Scott, now deceased, and her children in a nearby district called Sandy Ground. Miss Angie's children, Merkel, Lucy, Nicodemus, Isaiah, and Gustus, were more than cousin to Adelie. Those names in. and assisted her in every way possible until the Antillia family migrated to England. Bertha was a farmer and an early entrepreneur. She tried her hands at any crop that she knew would provide her with some cash to survive. She planted coffee, cocoa, bananas, yam, and she was not afraid to climb those breadfruit trees to pick the best rosy breadfruit she could find. Provisions such as red peas, pumpkin, chocho were among her favorite crops. She would sell these in the whole harbor market 40 miles away from home. She later developed a love for honey. And although she didn't have any behind, she would buy buckets of honey and retail them in small buckles. She was known for, by many for the best tasting honey around town. Birdeye was an incredible family woman and she was generous. She worked relentlessly and raised her six children. She was always there for them. She was up early in the morning and ensured they attended school on the meager sum that she could afford. Although Bernie did not understand the algebra and the Spanish and the six E's, Sister Morgan, like explore and engage and explain and so on and so forth, However, she knew way back that every child must learn and her children must learn. She was there when they needed her most. She took their education seriously, although sometimes the children had to help her to carry the market goods. But that was quite okay because she was working for them. Bernard loved to cook a lot of food, especially on Sundays. She had enough to share for two families and to share for any passers-by as well as neighbors. She would often have left over for her children to have a second serving during the night. Her children never go to bed hungry. Bernard would have trained any food for Appian saltfish with two slices of well-roasted breadfruit along the side of her plate. Fried fish was her next favorite food along with tonkami. You know tonkami? Sure. Along, along with tonkami in coconut milk with green bongo peas. Yes, you know that too? Yes. I love it too. I drink up that when you went to the market scene the other day, Sister Matamanze. The, the tonkami was so nice. I don't know who cares, but it was good. <laughs> a drink of suffragette mixed with trouble was what she called her energy drink. <laughs> she would never go through the day without her cup of black coffee and cranberry water. 
even though she often had her hands full with her children, she was always willing to help her friends and their children or to assist in anything that they needed. Those were the days when everybody's children were your children. Yeah. Bertha had loved her grandchildren and was concerned if she, were, if she did not see or hear from them. She would often ask for other relatives whenever time she spoke to them on the phone just to know that everybody was okay. Bertha taught her children to be industrious and kind to turn their hands and to make fashion. The children watched Bertha move like ants around the place, providing for them, and so they learned to provide for themselves as well. Whenever anyone would ask Bertha, how you do? Her response was, not feeling too well at all, but give God thanks, the breast still of blue. Our greatest memories of Bertha are that she's hard working and she loved her family. We recall Bertha spent some time in New Orleans with Joyce and Ernest. Although they took the best care of her, Bertha just wanted to go back home. She just wanted to see her grandchildren and Clifford and Jackie and Lana and all those. Joyce could not understand that although Ernest would visit her in the evenings after work, took her coffee and cranberry water, she just wanted to go back home. Once she was back, it would appear her sickness was all over. <coughs> I can imagine Bertha said in her heart, Joyce and Ernest, thank you my picnic, but no way better than that. <laughs> There's no place like home. And you know that, do you? There's no place like home. Miss Bird, I gave her life to the Lord in her 50s and remained a Christian in the Baptist church. She would often quote scriptures and sing songs. She was always encouraging someone to attend church. Miss Adderley, in her later years, was treated for asthma high blood pressure and diabetes. On February 28, 2018, she felt ill and was taken to the Mayhem Hospital where she passed away quietly. She left behind six children, Joyce, Lorna, Clifford, Ernest, Jackie, Ebron, nine grandchildren, three great-grandchildren, one sister, one brother, nieces, nephews, son-in-law, Leon, other relatives and friends. We do not know that morning that God would call her home. In life, we love her dearly. In death, we do the same. It broke our hearts to lose her. But we know one day all of us will go. A part of us went with her that day God called her home. She left precious memories. Her love is still in her mind. And though she cannot hear us, she will still be in our hearts. Our family chain is broken and nothing seems the same. But as God called us one by one, we hope to see her again. Sleep on Adelie, sleep on Berda, until that great getting up morning when no grave can hold your body down yes. in the bear. May your soul rest in peace.
pastors in the audience. Elders Carlton Anderson, Sister Leachman, Brother Douglas White, Elder Coleman, other elders in the audience. Sister Bandley, other Federation officers in the audience. Family members of the deceased, her six children, nine great-grandchildren, three grandchildren, brother and sister. Friends and family members, good afternoon. We are here to lay to rest a soldier in the army of King Jesus. A soldier whose work is now ending. Whose life is now over. But one whose life as you have listened and contribution makes it clear that she has fought a good fight. And so on behalf of Central Jamaica Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, on behalf Sister Lebanese of our president, um, who would have loved to be here, but had to attend another funeral service in Manchester for one of our mothers in Zion who died at 104. I should have been there for your first in my life. Your first. I'm the family pastor, I have nothing to watch. On behalf of all the directors, in the conference, and all the workers. When we spoke about you on Friday morning, one of the things that was said is that you are a dedicated lady for the church. And so on behalf of all of us who work at 58 Pontic Avenue, we want to pass on our deepest sympathy our sincere condolence and our empathy to the entire family. We note that your mother accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And so all we have to do is to leave her in the hands of God. He is a God who never make a mistake. And he's a God who always does that which is best and good for his children. We are people of the book, and we believe in the blessed hope. So, cheer up. It is said that the person that is asked to do the homily, is a homily. You homily go, and it's over should not go longer than 10 or 15 minutes say the church man. The person who is asked to do the homily, he has three responsibilities. Number one, he must always speak well of the deceased. That have been done already, so I don't have to repeat that. Number two, he has a responsibility to warn the living. And number three, he has a responsibility to comfort those who mourn. When he should have done that, he must take his seat and sit down. In comforting the family, therefore, and in warning the living, I want you to turn your Bibles with me, if you have it, to the book of Job chapter 14. And in the interest of time, I read from verse 7 to 15, and I will
will be very short. If you want to hear me preach, Sandra, and I'm happy to see Sandra. Stanley to see you, Sandra. I have something to tell them about you. When I was an intern, just came out of college, I came to Blue Hole Church. And um, there was a baptism program planned. Dr. Gray was supposed to do the baptism. He didn't turn up. So I had the opportunity to do my first baptism as a minister. And the first person that I baptized as a minister is Sandra. Yeah. She did well. I'm proud of you. You may be seated. Proud of you. How many persons have I baptized since? I don't know. How many persons have I have married since? Married 725. So if I have done that, I can't count how many persons I have baptized. So see, but I'm not the first one. I don't know who will be the last one. I know. Job chapter 14 says, Therefore, there, and you see my voice, I'm preaching. Sandra, I'm preaching. Uh, I have a baptism this evening, and I'm going to preach again tonight. And I preached yesterday, and I preached last Sunday for two funeral services also. So I'm preaching. If you want to hear a good sermon, come to the baptism service tonight. Job says, for there is hope. There is hope of a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branches thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof walks old in the earth, and the stalk thereof die in the ground, yet through the scent of water it will bud and bring forth boughs like a plant. But man dieth and wasteth away. Yea, man give up the last ghost. And where is he? As the waters fall from the sea, and the flood decay and dry up, so man lieth down and riseth not. Though the heavens be no more, they shall not awake, nor be raised out of their sleep. Oh, that you would hide me in the grave, that thou wilt keep me secret until thy wrath be past, that thou wilt appoint me a set time and remember me. If a man Shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait in my church, God. Thou shalt call and I will answer thee. Thou will have a desire to the work of my hand. And I say, Amen. What do you say? The Bible is a book that teaches us
while he was out shopping, the story said that he met death. And death told him he was coming for him that afternoon. He stopped shopping, stopped doing everything. And then he went home, packed up his things, got on his horse, and started to ride away from them. When he reached to another city, death met him and told him, this was where I had planned to meet you. <laughs> we are all born to die. Yes. And, if, if, and some people don't believe the Bible. But the psychologist will tell you that from a child it's been born. Are you sleeping on me? And it makes the first cry to say, In Jamaica, early in the 60s, we used to have a song that says, if life was a thing, the money could buy, you don't know the song. The rich would have lived, and the poor would have died, but you would have learned from now that money can't buy life. If money could have bought life, Princess Diana would be alive. If money could have bought light, Michael Jackson would be alive. If money could have bought light, ladies and gentlemen, Prince would have been alive. If money could have bought light, Sister Feminist, although we don't have any money, we would have gone to the bank and borrowed some money. We would have gone on our mattresses and take out what we have. And your mother, your mother would have been alive. And because money cannot buy life, it behoves us to make sure that our relationship with God is intact. Can I talk to you? Because, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes down to press a dying pillow, when it comes down to death and dying, we all need Jesus. We all need God. Yes. And if there's one thing I have learned from life experience, that if all one has in this life is that house on a hill, if all you have in this life is your lovely car, if all you have in this life is your PhD and your education. And those are important, don't get me wrong. If all you have in life is material thing, your money in the bank, if all you have in this world, ladies and gentlemen, is earthly position, you're going to die poor and you're going to die miserable because when it comes down to press a dying pillow, regardless of who you are, you need Jesus. That's why the songwriter says, I must have the Savior with me. For I hear not, I must see if his presence be me. And his arms around me show that he says, my soul will fear no fear. Let him lead me where he will. There is always a difference at a funeral service between a person who knows God yes. and the person who don't know God. Yes. There's a difference between the person who died in the Lord yes. and those who died outside of the Lord. Yes. You're not sleeping a little sleeping, ladies and gentlemen. There is a difference. Yes. And even though you miss your mother. 
mother, even though you miss your sister, even though you miss your grandmother, because of the hope that you have in Jesus. You do not serve as those who have no hope, but you know that we people enjoy for a night. Hallelujah! But joy comes in the morning, and better days will be coming by and by. So, I believe it was against this background that Job asked a number one question. Yes, sir. The question of life. Yes, if a man dies, shall, shall he yes, live again? Yes. Job must have attended many funeral services. If you read the book carefully, you will understand that he lost all his children. Yes. Hello! Yes. There was a time when his wife looked at him yes, and said, Job, as I love you, just curse God and finish with it, man, finish with it. And Job says, mm -mm. Mm -mm, I can't do that. Because he made a comparison between a plant and a human being. And Job says, if you have a tree, even though it is old, and you cut it down. And at the scent of water, it says, yes. it was frozen again. Yes. But he says, what happens to man when you plant him in the earth? What happens to man after you commit his body to the ground? And I have a lot of things to say, but I'm going quickly. Gnosticism says, that when you plant somebody in the earth, that there is something inside of the person that is known as a soul. And in every era, you have what is known as transmigration of the soul. They are supposed to find peace and happiness and be happy in each era. But if they don't find it, they are reborn in another era. You know, hear me down there. And if they don't do good to people and love people, they continue to re be reborn. Hello! Until they reach perfection, they go to paradise. Not this is it. The Lord, I can tell you this evening, but I don't have the time. You also have what is known as reincarnation. But the Lord, they say, that when you die, you can return in the form of a rat or a cat yes. or even a mouse or a spider. Are you sleeping on me? Are you sleeping on me? Then you have persons who believe, and I'm a Jamaican, that when a person dies, Pastella, they wait until the third morning when the sun is rising. Hello? And they rise in the sun. Hello? And they move around and make trouble and we call them Doki. <laughs> what happens to a person when he dies? Then there are others who say that there's a place between heaven and hell known as purgatory. If you're not too good to go to heaven, and too bad to go to hell, you go to purgatory. <laughs> Lord have mercy on me. Right. And they say, if you have enough money to pay the priest, the priest, the priest has the power to pray you out of purgatory into heaven. If you don't have enough money, he stays there or she stays there until they go to hell. I heard the story, Pastor Sweeney, of this gentleman whose brother was in purgatory. So he went to the priest and he asked him what part of my brother is left in purgatory. 
And the priest looked at him and said, your brother has been told he's still in purgatory. And the brother put his hand on his head, Sandra, and said, thank you, God, because while my brother was alive, he lost his victory. <laughs> what happened to a person when he died? Job says, man lies down and continues not to the heavens are no more what he say. So when a person dies, whether he is good, whether he is bad, you know, give me down there. He goes to the grave, what do you say? He does not go anywhere on the throne of God. He goes to the grave. And I believe the word, what do you say? I believe what the Bible said, what do you say? He goes to the grave. But I'm happy to see that. That's not the end of Job's story. That's not the end. He goes to the grave. But Job says, listen, you're going to call. So one day, God is going to call. What do you say? And Job says, when you call, I'm going to answer. What do you say? So if a man die, shall he live again? I say, yes, you shall live again. Your mother will live again. Because one of these days, You must be down there. He's gonna call and I will answer. And you say, Pastor, hear it there. Shut up your mouth. You don't know what you're talking about. I believe the word. My soul has found a resting place. Not in a man may creep. I shall say the living word. What do you say? My faith is rooted and grounded. If you don't believe that, the man who Job believed in, he was born in Bethlehem, Maine, smuggled into Africa, rare in Nazareth, baptized in the bloody Jordan, tempted, I wish I could preach here, but I don't have the time, tempted in the wilderness, what do you say? Spread by his mother, rejected by his friend, condemned by Pilate. Can I talk to you? Crucified on a cross. When he asked for water, they gave him vinegar to drink. Hello? But at the ninth hour, he cried out, Eli, Eli, let us pass the night. He gave up the gold and he died. I would, what I would if I could talk to you, I would tell you that it happened because it was Friday. In life, in life, we all have our Fridays. When the children are giving you a problem, it's a Friday. When you can't find money to pay the rent, it's a Friday. When you can't find food to eat, it's a Friday. When your girlfriend breaks your heart, it's a Friday. When your husband giving you a problem, it's a Friday. When your wife giving you trouble, it's a Friday. I don't want to 
offend anybody. I don't want anybody to be offended. But I have to speak the truth. He rested in the tomb on Saturday. Hallelujah! He arose! The God of the Christian religion is alive! 
It's wanted to run. You know, you know that. But he grabbed death by the neck. Hello. He turned death around. He said, Death, look at me. Look at me, death. I am he. That was dead. But I'm alive. Forevermore. And I have the key of death and of death. What do you say? Because Jesus is alive. Because all these things will pass away. 
So until then, dear God, may this be our experience. In Jesus' name we pray.
Resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Fear not. I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. I heard a great voice from heaven saying, Blessed are the dead that die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. I would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning those that are asleep, that is sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also will would sleep with Jesus will God bring with him. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God. In his love and mercy and wisdom to permit our dear sister to fall asleep in Christ, we do now tenderly commit her body to the ground, her to her, as to her, dust to dust, with the hope of a joyful resurrection when Jesus shall burst the clouds and come down to call his saints back to life. The Bible says, I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things will have passed away. I just want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, family members, remember that death is not the end. There is coming a day when no our takes will be, when life will be given back to those of us who are in Jesus Christ. My encouragement to us is that all of us will give our lives to the Lord so that when death comes, and it is very short, we shall be found safe with Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God in heaven, we commit this body to the ground. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will send angels to mark this spot. So that on that glorious morning when Jesus shall come to call the saints to life, our sister will hear the voice of Jesus and will come forth to live eternally in your kingdom. I pray, God, that every man, woman, boy and girl who witness this moment will be wise to mark and number their days and to apply their hearts to the wisdom that come from the word of God. We place ourselves into your hand now and we ask for your blessings and guidance and the mayors and gentlemen continue to do the final shores. May we all be wise as we see to listen to you and to follow you and then when Jesus comes, may you give us the joy of living with you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, gentlemen, we are going to be singing some choruses while the men labor on. Okay, somebody said we shall sing, shall we gather at the river? And then we will go into the choruses. I suppose they are going to need it.
this little space. Shall, Shall we gather at the river, 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 river,
some s- a Sunday. Meet me by the river. One more, one thing in my heart. I like.